or anger, you look upon us and you smile. We are your dear children. So as our hearts turn to this maybe difficult concept of, of anger, uh, we pray that it would be replaced with your perfect peace and your love for us as your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, Christ Greenfield, what a joy to be with you. My name is Tim Allman, one of the pastors here. And if we've not met, like Nate said, thank you. Can't wait to meet you after worship today. We've been walking through the book of Psalms, the prayer book of the Bible, and there's all different emotions, right? You bring the good, the bad, and the ugly to God from gratitude and, and joy to depression, despair, uh, last week, anxiety, and this week, anger. <laughs> <Woo -hoo. laughs> you bring it all. You bring it all to Jesus, and, and he meets you. The root uh, of anger is actually fear. Think of a time when you experienced something unjust. You were hurt. And you were maybe in that moment super, super afraid. As you look back at that moment, you may have this righteous anger at the injustice that happened to you or to someone, someone you love. Can Christians be righteously angry? That's our question for today. You see, Jesus comes to me consistently, and he says, do not be angry Tim, when you, I'm wearing a golf shirt, right? When you, you're not that good, bro. By the way, when you slice one out of bounds, when you're like one over, you're not that good. Give it to Jesus. Do not, do not be angry. As I look at the world and things that we know are right are called wrong and wrong right, and I just kind of, get ugh, all that kind of stuff. You watch The Sound of Freedom, which I saw this last week, at the injustice, the abuse of the most vulnerable in our in our communities, in our world, you may have this sense of right. Jesus comes. He says, do not be angry. Maybe a better emotion for that is just profound sadness. Do not be, do not be angry. I look at stuff that's just happened in my home and uh, kids that struggle, and we all have kids that struggle through the ups and downs of, of adolescence and life. And there's this part of me as a dad that's like, this should not be. Jesus comes to me and says, do not be angry, Tim. You could go 20, 30 years down the road, and he, I could come back, Jesus says, and find this old dude sitting in a well-worn chair saying, kids these days and where's this fun? That's not going to be me, by, <laughs> by the way. I pray it's not you. As Jesus comes to you and says, do not, do not be angry. So can a Christian have righteous anger. One of uh, my favorite professors, his name is Jeffrey Gibbs, and he wrote in Concordia Journal, uh, at Concordia Seminary, he wrote an article called The Myth of Righteous Anger. The Myth of, of Righteous Anger. So today we're going to do a survey through the Old Testament and New Testament. Don't worry, it's only going to be about 10 minutes or so, but we're going we're gonna to really search out the scriptures to discern if a Christian can have righteous anger anger. So the Old Testament. Uh, three more times than when the anger is used with humans, anger is used in relation to God. God is vengeful. He is filled with anger, especially at what? Sin. <laughs> Our sin. Idolatry. Adultery. Immorality. God, actually in the Hebrew, it's like his nostrils are like flared. He is righteously angry. Um, and yet the cool thing about God is there's an alien nature or a foreign nature to God. That is God of, of wrath. But he sets aside that, that nature for what? A God of love. He is now, Exodus 34, as he identifies himself, he is slow to what? Anger. And abounding in, in steadfast love. Now, newsflash, you and I, we're not God. God can handle being righteously angry. You and I, as sinful, fallen, broken, mortal humans, we, we cannot. But you may say, because I know a lot of you are theologians, right? So you're, what about when Moses 
comes down off the mountain after being with God, sees a golden calf, throws down the Ten Commandments. What about that? Or what about, what about in Psalm 139, where David asks God, this is like, uh, what's that movie with Jim Carrey? Oh, smite them, almighty smiter. Come and destroy my, my enemies, right? What about, what about that? Well, Jeff Gibbs actually says, and I, I tend to agree with this, you can't look at all of the negative emotions of any of the biblical characters and simplistically warrant their emotional response. So Jesus. Let's go to Jesus. Jesus went into the temple, man. He's kicking over tables. He's turning, he's doing this Jesus, Jesus thing. Again, I will tell you, you, you know this. We're not, we're not Jesus. <laughs> Jesus can perfectly handle his emotions, knowing what word to say in the right way to the Sadducees and Pharisees and to the disciples. So let's look at Jesus, how he interacts with the disciples. There's a lesser known story in Luke chapter 9. So at the beginning of Luke chapter 9, you have Jesus sending out the 12. Luke 10, remember, he sends out the 72. Or right between that, in uh, verse 54, there's a story of Jesus, a short story of Jesus and the disciples passing through a Samaritan town. And this is actually shown in The Chosen. Uh, my son Malachi actually showed it to me. It, it's a really, really good, good clip. But they're passing through the Samaritan town. And you remember Jews, Samaritans, they're at odds. So guess what? how the Samaritan town receives Jesus and the disciples? They don't. They don't receive him. And guess what the disciples actually say? Hey, Jesus, <laughs> you want us to call down fire from heaven? To destroy that town? And Jesus looks at them. The scripture actually says he rebukes them strongly. (laughs) So we don't know exactly what Jesus says. Here's what I think. Come on. Come on, man. What's wrong with you? If fire is going to come down in heaven, all y'all are going to burn. I don't think you want that right now. You don't know what you're saying. Or then go to the garden. When the greatest injustice of all time is taking place... Peter wants to take matters in his own hand, takes out the sword. He's not, he's not very good, thankfully, right? And he just hits the ear of Malchus. Again, Jesus looks at Peter. What's wrong with you, bro? This is not, don't you know that those who live by the sword will die, die by the sword? Put it back. He heals. It's a crazy story, right? Jesus being taken away, he heals Malchus's ear. So if we look at the narrative of Jesus as he relates to you and I as disciples, I think we're left saying, I don't know if there's such a thing, such a thing as uh, righteous anger. If you go then to the writings of the Apostle Paul, anger gets placed with a whole host of negative t- character traits. Sexual immorality, um, stealing, robust, robust anger. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Uh, you guys know this. The love, love is patient. It's kind. It's not irritable or resent resentful it keeps no no record of justice wrongs this is what love love does now i know some of you are saying but i know ephesians 4 and that's what you're saying right be angry and do not sin well here's the context a lot of times we read this and we take it out of context therefore having put away falsehood let each one of you speak the truth so i think a lot of that we'll just pause right there a lot of times doesn't this mean that we're setting aside the truth, right? No, 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 no. We're going to speak the truth with our neighbor, for we are members. This is so good. We're members. This draws to 1 Corinthians 12, Romans 12. We're members of the body of Christ, one of another. Be angry. So here it is. And do not sin. Keep reading. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity <laughs> to, to the devil. He's saying, you're going to become angry. There's going to be things that happen in your life or to your loved ones or in the world. It's going to lead you to anger, but do not fan it into flame. Go and confess it. Go and make it right. Do not hesitate, because anger will eat you up on the inside. You're trying to take what is God's on yourself. And it could produce disastrous results. Guess what you're doing, the Apostle Paul is saying. You are giving room to the devil. And Satan is just having a heyday today, church. 
He loves to steal, steal, kill, destroy, divide. Keep them fearful. Keep them angry. Keep them fighting with one another. I'm here to tell you, anger is not persuasive. It's not. So we're a, just case study. We believe, based on scripture, um, we're fearfully and wonderfully made, and life starts at, at conception, right? I saw this precious little one, two years old today, young, young family. Look at this little one. I'm like, this is a miracle. You never look at toes, do you? Like adult toes, no one looks at toes. I'm like, look at those little toes. Just amazing. All the features, perfect, you know? We're a, we're a pro-life congregation, but a lot of times the way churches talk about it, it's in an adversarial way. We're pro-life, you, you, you guys. They're not the enemy. People with other ideologies, other belief systems, not the enemy. We got an enemy, and it's sin. <laughs> it's, it's the flesh. It's us. And it's the devil who's having a heyday today. So just call, call him out and recognizing we, each one of us, are the chief, chief sinners. Chief sinners. So Psalm 22 comes, and you have, you have David. If a guy ever has a reason to be angry, he's been pursued by Saul. He's running. I mean, did, did you read that? He's got the bulls of Bashan. All these different, like, creation is rebelling against him. You've got dogs coming out of eating his flesh. All of his ribs are exposed. He feels attacked from every side, even by God, my God, my God, why? Why have you forsaken me? Why have you forsaken me? And then Jesus, obviously, is the one who fulfills, fulfills this text for us. So as you look at this amazing text, um, I just want to draw your attention to just two verses, because it's like 30-some verses long. But what God, or David, does consistently is he goes back, and then he goes forward. Right now is hard, God. He goes back, and then he goes forward. Verse, verse 4 of this amazing text. In you our fathers, he's talking about Abraham, Isaac, in you our fathers trusted, they trusted, and you delivered them. You've done it in the past, you can do it right now. And then in verse uh, 27, all the end, this is future focus, all the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship you. You see, the wrath of God was placed on his son for you. He was forsaken for you. He died your death on the cross, rose victoriously from the grave. He ascended into heaven. He reigns over all things. You don't have to be angry or afraid. And guess what? He is going to come back to make all things new. You know the story of which you're a part. So chill. Right? Take yourself in the world like bless find joy in the simple things that Jesus could, could struggle and trial and intent, maybe in persecution come even within our lifetime? Could saying some of the things that I say right now get us, can, yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> you can take my life. My life is hidden with Christ. We've been crucified with him. It's no longer we who live, it's him who lives within us. So on this journey, your dash of life, do not be angry. Replace that anger with the love of God that's yours in Christ Jesus and the peace of God that surpasses all human, human understanding. Much better way to live. So the takeaway for today, three points. Anger is normal, so confess it. <laughs> when you find yourself getting dragged there, um, just confess it, offer it to Jesus. It's normal in a fallen world. And ask the Holy Spirit to take away your anger. Replace it with the fruit of the Spirit. Sometimes I'm like, I think we want to say, well, I'll just take some parts of the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, maybe a little bit of kindness. I don't know about it. But then go to the very end, the last characteristic, self-control. We grow up, and we grow up into him who is our head. And then we leave, last one, vengeance and righteous anger. It belongs to God alone. I'll get... I'll get emails and texts, uh, <laughs> about one a week, and there's a couple of you in here who I love and respect, so don't, don't take this the wrong way by any stretch. Uh, but I get sometimes videos that come that have the tone of, hey, the church needs to take a stand today, and you can list the topic, right? 
And I find myself, in, in terms of content, agree, right? The law, the wrath of God, for, for sure. But yet sometimes I listen to the tone of some of these, some of these leaders, preachers, etc. And I'm like, oh man, like we've missed the fact that the anger of God starts with us. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so I'm just praying, Christ Greenfield, that our tone, I think we have a unique opportunity today, that as we engage topics of immorality and, and corruption, despair, anxiety, all this kind of, as we engage those things today, we would do so from a place of love. Because <laughs> guess what? Anger actually moves us from this part of our brain, our thinking rational brain, down to our reptilian brain, where we're just reacting, reacting, reacting. May the church not be known for that, but may it be known for love, and the peace of God that comes from, from Jesus. So Deacon Steve actually said, you should read Psalm 23 connected to Psalm 22. So today to close, I'm going to read, pray this over us today. And what the emotion that you will experience is not anger. As we lean into our good, our good shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes, me, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, Lord Jesus, we thank and praise you for stepping down into our broken reality, taking on all the anger, the wrath of God for us, drinking that cup of wrath and passing through that wrath to the love of the Father. Father, we thank and praise you that by faith in your Son, our Savior, your primary disposition toward us is love, not anger. May that love emanate from us, marinate in our hearts, and then move from our hearts, from our homes, out into our community, that the church would be known for truth spoken in love and not anger. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you to rise. What a joy to be with you today. As you go with the presence of Almighty God, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. God is good all the time. We'll see you in the courtyard.